All right, hello everyone and welcome to a live trading recording. It, the time is 18.13 New York local time. It is Sunday, July the 2nd, 2023. This is going to be one of my longer runtime videos as I am trading a top step trader funding step two. Uh, profit target today is $3,600. Um, and so uh, we're trying to get this account up to uh, yeah, it's going to 153.578 plus 3,200. We're trying to get this account up to 156.778. Uh, yeah, that's, that is, no, well, no, that's 3,200. I'm sorry. I said that wrong. The profit target is 3,600. 153.578.97 plus 3,600. Okay, uh, it is 157.178. Okay, 157.178, that is today's profit target. Um, and we're going to get started right away. So, profit target again is 157.178. Required SEC and CFTC, that is Securities Exchange Commission and Commodities Trading Futures Commission. Uh, required disclosures I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice um, because I'm also a licensed attorney for the State Bar of Texas. Let me also say that this is not legal advice and I'm not soliciting, uh, I'm not soliciting you to hire me as your attorney. So that should cover all of my regulatory bodies. I also have a risk disclaimer in my description. Further risk disclaimer, uh, what you're about to see on your screen is simulated trading. Um, simulated trading may not represent uh, periods of illiquidity in a live market account. Um, so this is simulated trading. Um, I believe that it still does have a time priority factor in the CME's algorithms, but let's just say, you know, it is simulated. Um, it will not be simulated if I get to a, a funded account, a prop, not a, a live funded account. At that point, it would not be simulated. Okay, so we are looking at a breakaway gap, measuring gap um, combo. Uh, let's see what that would take us in terms of standard deviations. Let's take it for two. See if we can get two standard deviations on this move down. I uh, cannot for the life of me get that to pop up correctly. Let's clone that box. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, take this trade for two standard deviations and that would take us there. Um, we are following a pyramid strategy. What do I mean by that? Uh, we're working our way up to three contracts. We're going to try and get up to three contracts. Okay. Open up the week on the NASDAQ with a new week opening gap. You can see that the high of that is 15,330, spot 50. Low of that comes into 15,317, spot 75. Um, just going to go ahead and mark out the midpoint of that. Uh, I'm going to try and demonstrate to you proper risk management. I'm going to try and demonstrate to you um, a reasonable, uh, you know, attempt at at getting to funding. I'm not going to show you uh, degenerate gambling. So we are taking this one step at a time. That high up there should be protected. What is a protected high? It's a high that is really unlikely to be breached. Um, it shouldn't be internal. So this high here is going to be internal. That high there is going to be external. So that is a 17 point stop loss. Therefore, um, I am at one contract. Um, so that is that. We can see that we came in, we formed a breakaway gap there. That, sh that should remain open uh, for our position to be nice and, uh, nice and clean. I believe that this should be a measuring gap if we leave part of that open. So Pretty soon, we're probably going to add on contract number three. We're going to work our way up to, uh, sorry, number two. We're going to work our way up to um, three contracts. As you know, uh, I'm going to be video recording pretty much every session that I sit down and trade. Um, video record that for you. I'm going to give you some live commentary. We're only trading the NASDAQ, uh, but let's have a look at the dollar index. Dollar index is open up a little bit down. So, 
nice and big healthy new week opening gap as you know I believe that these markets are automated I believe that they are driven by a pricing engine got a lower high there it's that on contract number two and let's take a full pull there uh, put that back to one contract up that to two contracts um, so we're looking to make 15 points on two contracts want to see purple box there that 355 evens remain open you'll notice I'm not putting on my entire position at one spot okay I'm waiting to see the market develop I want to see the things that I want to see prior to putting on more contracts okay pink box should remain open don't want to see it trade back to pink box um, it can okay I believe that my stop should be a protected high um, Ideally, okay, ideal scenario, it doesn't trade back to 354 or three quarters. We're just going to come straight down to our new week opening gap. You will notice that I have my take profit above the new week opening gap high, so this is really a reasonable profit target. I think it's going to trade down to 324 quarters. And if I put on a third contract, that might be uh, a third target. So, guys, we're taking this slowly. Okay, we're trying to get funded slowly. We're trying to demonstrate the top step that yes, I, Reese, can trade responsibly. I'm not going to blow through the money that you allow me to trade with. You might think that I'm a company bitch for saying that. I'm really not. Um, my objective is to really trade my own trade station account, but unfortunately, I blew that. So we got to take things differently, right? Yeah. So. Trade Station doesn't have any sort of limits on you, and so yeah, I pretty quickly blew through uh, about fifteen thousand uh, dollars because I was an idiot. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that talk. Just being real with you. Shit's hard. So um, many of you have already clicked off the video. If you're still on the video, it's highly unlikely that you're going to actually watch this whole thing. Y'all are going to go back to your cat videos. Um, I would ask kindly, my request to you is please leave this video recording up in the background. So open up a new tab before you go to a new, another YouTube video, which I know that you're not going to watch this whole, you're going to skip through it, right? What I'm asking you, uh, if you, if you want to help me out, you don't have to. Uh, leave this video running in the background. That will give me more watch time. That's going to boost this channel in the algorithm. Guys, we play by algorithms nowadays. That's what we do. So I'm going to ask you to mute the video, put it on in the background, whatever, uh, if you're not watching this whole thing. You know, we're looking at a one minute chart coming into a holiday weekend. This thing's not going to move very much. Um, it's just what it is. So. Again, profit target is 157, 178, uh, and we're currently sitting at 153, 641. So we've got a ways to go before we get there. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you my live update of what I'm seeing on the NASDAQ right now. Uh, that should be a breakaway gap. That should be a measuring gap. Um, we have a lower high came in, filled in that inefficiency. New week gap is sitting lower. So using our advanced gap theory in real time, uh, you know, I will show you here from this high to measuring gap. Okay, let's start taking our standard deviation projections um, and taking taking it, you know, from the low of the measuring gap. Okay, I'm taking standard deviation projections. You can see that I'm aiming for two. Now, let's clone that. See that three standard deviation projections takes us about to the new week opening gap CE. It takes us through the new week opening gap high. 
let's see, four standard deviation projections. Uh, we're looking at new week opening gap low. So I believe that, that is what the algorithm has in mind for us, is to come down to new week opening gap. So there you have it. We're probably going to add on contract number three here momentarily. If I can see that, uh, see the things I want to see. We got a uh, bear shorter block there. Try, price could trade back up into my position, put me a break even. Could trade all the way up to 354, three quarters. Um, I would definitely add on a third contract there. Don't want to see it trade up to pink box. Okay, I'll make that box red. It's kind of the same color, really. Uh, Blue, uh, with a yellow. Okay, yellow box is what I believe to be a breakaway gap. Price should not come back up there. Uh, pink box is what I believe to be a measuring gap. I don't want to see price come in and, and fully refill that. Uh, pink box is down, so purple box is measuring gap. Pink boxes are standard deviations from that high to this, what I believe to be measuring gap, and that will take us down to new week opening gap. So advanced gap theory in play. Um, I believe that price is coming down at least two standard deviations right away and then should come down to over three standard deviations. Let's see if that's a little bit more perfect if I overlap them. No, I'm not going to do that. I don't think that that is superior. There it is. Right there. Okay. That's advanced gap theory right there. Um, we break new low. Bear shorter block. Should be a very strong draw right now to new week opening gap. I don't want to add on contract three yet, though. Don't want to do it. Because I think this thing could still come back up, trade in, at least right there. Probably going to put me a break even. There is a big debate out there on the Discord and prop firm community about whether you should trade multiple accounts. I have tried trading multiple accounts, uh, and I think you should limit it. Okay, I really do. I think you should limit it to one or two. My uh, career plan is to trade two two accounts. Uh, unfortunately, I blew out. Uh, over fifteen thousand dollars on my own trade station account so I don't have that available to me anymore I leave a little bit of money in there now that I cannot trade with uh, so they don't close out my trade station account don't want to see them close it out uh, but that being said uh, my objective is to get right back in there trade my own trade station account um, good broker by the way discount broker uh, it's not their fault that I lost the money it's 100 percent my fault uh, trade station paid me the same day uh, when I did take a uh, did take a withdrawal from Trade Station, so I think Trade Station's good. Um, it's not Trade Station fault. Trade Station's fault that I lost the money. It, it was looking. You're looking at the culprit. Um, that being said, uh, two accounts is my goal. So top step trader funding. I want to get to a live funding account. That's going to take time. I have to work through multiple sim accounts before they sign me up for a live brokerage account. Okay, we're going to add on contract three. And third contract goal is going to be aggressive, I admit. We're going to take one off there if we can get that. Okay, this is going to be the maximum position size that I want on at this time. I don't want to take on any more risk. That's it. Three contracts is enough. Um, I'm trying to show uh, top step. I'm trying to show the powers that be, which for me is Michael Patak and Top Step, uh, that I have, that I can control the risk, and that they can trust me with their money, not to fucking blow it, all right? Uh, I have to prove that to myself. I have to prove that to Michael Patak. 
You might think I'm a shill for saying that. He sounds like a pretty reasonable guy to me. Sounds like a very relatable guy. So I really got no problem with him. Entrepreneur. I like it. I really like uh, a lot of his background story. I like Top Step a lot. I really do. It's a firm that I would recommend. I hope to be affiliated with them someday in the future. Got to grow up this YouTube channel. The runtime of this session, we're probably looking at one to two hours. Uh, holiday shortened weekend, I can trade up to uh, one or thirteen hundred New York local time tomorrow. This is a step to account. Uh, I'll try to be out of the marketplace before then. Right, this thing is probably going to put me into drawdown and then go down. Uh, yeah, I came down to a volume imbalance. I think there's going to be a straw, a strong draw. Uh, for the to that new week opening gap it's probably going to trade up and down and all around the new week opening gap so what do I mean by that I mean it's probably going to come down for the first time trade all the way down to 317 spot 75 start working on filling in that ironing out that inefficiency and then trading back up so this could be a short play and then a long play uh, this thing is you know looking like it wants to come put me in a drawdown that's why I'm not um, You'll notice I'm not piling on the risk. Um, 22 points on three contracts. That's uh, 660 something dollars, and that's the maximum that I'm willing to lose right now. I'm not going to put on a fourth contract, so lower that down to one. Two contracts come off at a conservative profit target of now 14 points. One contract comes off at a, an aggressive target, which is 24. That would be a 24 point win. So that's what we're looking at. Uh, you can see that I'm applying advanced gap theory real time, talking you through it, measuring breakaway gap, measuring gap, standard deviation projections. Also applying our new week opening gap theory from Michael. Um, I, inner circle trader Michael. There's a lot of Michaels out there. Uh, Arch Archangel Michael from the Bible, the one who cast down Lucifer. Seth. Um, so, that being said, this thing might come back up to exactly there. 351 quarters. Now, if it leaves that gap, that sibby open, that would be a good sign for lower. But I don't think it will. I think it's going to curl back up. It's going to go right there, 351 quarters. Maybe higher, maybe 352 evens, and then trade lower. There's going to be a very strong draw on price to come in and fill in this new week opening gap. So I think that for the next few hours, we're looking at like that. My most reasonable assessment of what price is going to do. Can I get to $3,600 in a holiday shortened day? Maybe. You know, if we're really on point with the trading. I really view this as a challenge. Uh, I think a lot of people out there, um, you know, have the mindset that the companies are at battle with you. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, I know that, you know, it's really a win-win model. If you're really good at day trading, they take 10% from you. That's a win for them. They get 10%. So, all right, that was a good, uh, good push there. Good push, good push. Should come down into our new week opening gap. Should easily, comfortably fill my profit target. Third profit target's pushing it. You know, really pushing it would be new week opening gap low, which I do think it gets there, but I'm not pushing it that far. Um, I might upload this video separately. Uh, you know, put this session in as a single trade, start up a new recording. Okay, so we just formed a SIBI. Okay, just formed a SIBI on the way down. Just created a bearish order block. Um, midpoint of that order block probably trades back up to 344 evens. Very strong draw on price to be efficient right now. I don't think that price wants to be inefficient uh, over a holiday weekend. I don't think that the powers that be would want price to be inefficient right now. That would seem very odd to me. 
I think 95% of the time they want price to be efficient. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you got to study your ICT. Uh, he is linked in my channel. So I think, by the way, here's my criticism of, of current funding companies like Apex Trader Funding, and I'm, and I'm just going to lay it on you. Um, advertising 20 simultaneous P performance accounts is encouraging gambling. I'm a licensed attorney. Sorry. And they're in Texas, by the way. So... Sorry. I I would be surprised if Apex is around uh, a few years from now. I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying they don't pay. I'm not saying I'm going to sue Apex. I'm not. But encouraging people to get 20 accounts, that's pushing it. I know from a regulatory perspective, that's pushing it. They might not think about it right now in, in those terms, but I'm telling you, lawsuit's coming. A lawsuit is coming against Apex for encouraging gambling. There's no way it's not. Some guy is going to come out there and say, I blew $20,000 on, on Apex accounts, and he's going to sue them. Guarantee. Uh, they will be sued. Okay. Required State Bar of Texas disclosure. I am not uh, going to sue Apex. I am not soliciting you to hire me as an attorney. I'm not going to sue that company. I don't care. Uh, State Bar of Texas, please understand that I am not really an active attorney, uh, even though I do have my active license. Um, so if anybody from the State Bar finds this video, uh, I am not encouraging anyone to sue anyone. I am providing uh, a reasoned opinion, and that's it. A reasoned opinion from, from my studies in law school, time and practice. It is my opinion that Apex Trader Funding, based out of Austin, is probably going to find itself in a lawsuit over encouraging gambling behavior. And it might end up in federal court if there is diversity jurisdiction. Uh, many of you are probably wondering, what is diversity jurisdiction? Diversity jurisdiction, which is Section 1332, I want to say, of your Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, uh, it's also in the United States Constitution. That is um, Amendment 14, I think. No, that's wrong. Is it the 14th Amendment? Anyways, when there is diversity jurisdiction, so let's say Apex Trader Funding is an LLC here in the great state of Texas. Um, let's say that somebody in Florida blows $30,000 on Apex accounts trying to, trying to get through 20 accounts and uh, you know loses his life his or her life savings if let's say that person in the state of Florida wants to come and sue Apex in Texas their attorneys will probably want to take them to federal court that's diversity jurisdiction if the litigants are in different states and the amount in controversy is over seventy five thousand dollars and it's got to be over seventy five thousand dollars for those of you taking the bar exam it must be over seventy five thousand dollars cannot be seventy five thousand dollars even must be amount in controversy over seventy five thousand dollars so I do think that Apex is uh, probably going to be sued. Yeah, encouraging people to have 20 accounts. Not a very strong legal position. Very much sounds like you're encouraging gambling. Uh, and I do think that Apex Trader Funding will likely end up in a lawsuit. Now, again, for my State Bar of Texas, if this video ever somehow comes back to me personally, I am giving you my opinion, opinion, not stating fact, opinion. Are we all clear on that? Opinion. I'm bloviating, bloviating, yammering. That's it. I'm not representing anyone. I do not have any clients and I do not represent you. So if you want to be the one that goes sue and go to sue Apex or any of these prop firms, I'm not representing you. You are not my client. If you're in the state of Texas, you're watching this video, you're like, damn, I want to have this guy as my attorney. No. The answer is no. Yeah, I don't think they should be encouraging 20 accounts from a legal perspective. If I were on their legal team down there in Austin in, uh, for Apex, I would say, mm, bad. You're going to get some guy. By the way, we talked about diversity jurisdiction. Uh, Apex offers international uh, in an international client base. That could be wire fraud. 
could be a number of things. Um, but most likely a civil suit, right? I don't think they're committing crimes necessarily, but I think that they will be sued for encouraging gambling. Yeah, I do. And specifically why? I can't believe that they have not consulted. They're pretty wealthy guys, and I really cannot believe that they have not consulted with a legal team on this. Um, I think that this business model, uh, number one, it's probably going away in the future completely. Like even Top Step is probably going away. Um, but Top Step is a little bit better with you know with the disclosures. Top Step, from a legal perspective, is is better with the um, it discloses the pass rates. It discloses you know pretty much everything up front. You do have to pay professional data fees. That kind of covers their ass a little bit. So I know that if I were on Top Step's legal team, I would say, yeah, they got to pay professional data fees. If you're going to hire them, you're going to hire on independent contractors to trade your company's money. They got to they got to pay professional fees. Uh, many of you are probably you know not not happy with that. But it really, you know, shields them from some legal liability uh, from CME scrutiny. So I, I would definitely do it. If I were their legal advisor, I would make people, uh, to be honest with you, they should probably have to get securities license, licenses as well. That's probably what's coming. Sorry. It almost certainly is. Uh, Apex, the, 20, the 20, 20 simultaneous accounts and encouraging that. If I were on their legal team, I'd say bad. That's really opening yourself up to liability. Badly. Really badly. I'm not saying they should be sued. I'm just saying they will. And I, We have a lot of... We are a... Um, let me use the proper term for it. We are a very plaintiff-friendly system in the United States. We are not Europe. Uh, in Europe, they're a more defendant, defendant-friendly system. In the United States, we are a plaintiff-friendly. We encourage uh, plaintiffs to bring their complaints to the court. Whether you agree with that or not, I'm just telling you that's how it works. Uh, so we, generally speaking, if you have a complaint against a company or an individual or both, usually your attorney is going to include both in the lawsuit. I think Daryl Martin's probably getting sued. Yeah, and his company's probably getting sued. Specifically for the 20 account thing. That's specifically. That's that's opening them up badly. And I never put any thought to it when I was just trying to trade their accounts. And I was like, damn, they really do say you should probably get multiple accounts. That's really bad. Very bad. So you probably won't see Apex around for another year or two years. They're going to be sued out of existence. Again, State Bar of Texas Disclosure, I don't know that for a fact. I'm not committing slander. I'm giving you my opinion. Okay. Any of these companies that are, that are really encouraging you to hit it hard and hit multiple accounts, like even Top Step is saying, you know, you can get three accounts. I wouldn't even encourage that. Just from a legal liability perspective, bad news. But Apex saying you need, you know, you can have 20 bad yeah I don't think old Daryl has advised his legal team enough um, I really don't I am not slandering Daryl Martin this is my opinion so if anybody comes and finds me I'm really not that hard to find I'm on the State Bar of Texas website this is my opinion have we been clear on that but okay, let's say that some guy in Canada, all right, so you've got a Canadian that's using Apex Trader funding. All right, let's say that, you know, he inherited $100,000 from his parents. He goes and blows it all on 20 Apex accounts. All right, so he goes through $100,000, he or she, $100,000 through 20 Apex accounts, never gets there. He's suing Apex, 100%. He or she is suing Apex.
All right, we got a retracement against us. So back on that topic, required State Bar of Texas disclosure. I do not represent you. I'm not interested in representing you. Um, these are all my opinions. I can't say that enough. You, you think it doesn't matter. It, it does. I can be disbarred. So it does. There's people from Texas watching this. You, you know, you're probably, if you're sitting in another country, you're sitting me to blather on, this nut doesn't make any sense to you. But if you're sitting in the state of Texas, I could be your attorney, and I don't want to be. So, it matters. I think that the day is coming where if you trade for a top step, or you trade for any of these companies, you got to get your securities license. I really do think that's coming. That's how normal prop firms work in New York. Other places, you got to have a securities license to trade someone else's money, um, and I think that's coming very soon. Yeah, because we're all trading with other people's money, and we're not getting securities licenses. So, I do think that that day is coming. There, you know, the SEC is going to come out and issue some sort of an opinion or a statement, uh, and they're going to say that all of the people that are trading Top Step, whatever, Apex, Earn to Trade, if you're in the United States, you got to get licensed. Uh, which, you know, that's just another test you got to take, and it's possible. A securities license, you know, you got to learn about securities. You'll have to do a bunch of paperwork. You have to get your securities license. I think that's coming, 100%. Um, but Apex is probably, okay, I need to do a lot of cushioning here. Apex Trader Funding specifically, which is an LLC out of Austin, Texas, I looked at their deal contract. I looked at their independent contractor contract. It was very poorly drafted. It was not a good-looking contract at all. Um, they are encouraging people to get 20 of these accounts and to pay for them all. And you're doing that mm, bad, very bad. Uh, I think they're going to be sued to hell. I cannot believe they do that. I really, you know, a lot of you are probably sitting there, you're like, the fuck are you talking about? I'm saying from a legal liability perspective, there's some guy in Florida, in Tennessee, in Kentucky, wherever the hell he or she is, that's losing on Apex probably over $100,000. You don't see it? Okay, we just hit our first profit target. You don't see it, but I guarantee you it's there. 100%. Some guy has blown his entire inheritance on these prop firms, and yeah, a law firm would take that case, guaranteed. A law firm would take that person on, because it would be a big case. And by the way, I'm going to give you worst scenario for Apex Trader Funding LLC out of Texas. Worst case scenario, you get somebody in like Florida, California, another state, so you have, juris you have diversity jurisdiction, and that person goes in for a class action, they're done over. You're looking at a multi-million dollar lawsuit. It's the truth. You're looking at a multi-million dollar class action against Daryl Martin and against Apex Trader Funding, specifically for two reasons. Number one, uh, they don't make you pay professional data fees. So they're treating people on these PA accounts like you are a professional, but you're, you're not paying the data fees. So that's kind of stealing from the CME. They might get sued by the, C, by the Chicago Merc Mercantile Exchange. They might be sued by the any number of organizations, really. But it's going to be that... It's going to be that guy who blew like $100,000 plus on Apex accounts trying to trade like 20 of them. And uh, Mr. Martin's going to be pretty upset when it comes, and it's coming. It's going to be a demand letter first. It's going to be cease, cease and desist. They're not going to want to cease and desist, but they'll have to. And then it's going to be lawsuit, and then it's going to be settlement. Yeah, why? Because, number one, you're not getting your securities license, which if you're trading for a company or if you're trading for a, a C corporation, S corporation, whatever, LLC, partnership, you, 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 in theory, you should have to get a securities license to do that in the United States. Number two, uh, you're talking about like the worst offender in the industry trying to get you to trade 20 accounts. That's encouraging gambling. 
And that's very bad, uh, in my opinion. So, I think Apex Trader Funding LLC is going to go the way of the dustbin because they're going to be sued out of existence. I think the only company that you're going to see remain are going to be the ones like Top Step that are trying to do it professionally that make you pay professional data fees. But in the future, they're, they're just going to come out and say, like, you got to get your securities license. That's probably not for like two or three years, but it is coming. And at that point, I'll have to get my securities license, right? Got my law license, I can get my security license. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy to look up who I am. Please don't stalk me. Please don't try and contact me. Unless, you know, well, I shouldn't say that. That'd be advertising. I'm not a allowed to advertise as an attorney directly. Kind of. I have to be very careful with it. If you or a loved one has been affected by mesothelioma, you see a lot of you people that are, if you're watching this, you're kind of in a foreign country and, and everything I just said to you doesn't make sense. Let me just tell you something about the United States legal system. We sue people a lot. We are a very plaintiff friendly jurisdiction. Most of the jurisdictions that my people are watching from, you know, Middle East, Europe, Canada, less Canada, they're all very defendant, defendant friendly um, jurisdictions, not the United States. We're plaintiff friendly. We are a very litigious society. And some law firm out there is going to get a big case here, big case, going to be multi million dollars. It's going to be uh, probably diversity jurisdiction. It's probably going to be a class action. It's probably going to be big. Not going to happen tomorrow. You know. If I were advising Apex Trader Funding LLC right now, I'd be saying get the fuck away from advising people to get 20 accounts. That's bad. Very bad. You don't have to go all the way there just yet until the SEC issues. SEC is going to come out with a with an opinion on it. Until that point. All right, we're down to one contract. Uh, I'm going to let this trade play out. Let's see where we are. Uh, 154, 349 simulated. We're trying to get up to 157, 178 today. That's going to be work. Doable work. Yeah. Please do not contact me. Please do not contact my family. I know there's some weirdos out there. I'm not interested. Please don't. You're in the state of Texas. I don't represent you. And I don't want to. Unless you got that case. And you know what I'm talking about. Something, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But then again, no. Required disclosure, no. All right. I got to uh, put off the camera for a minute. I'll be back.
Yeah. Yeah, I think Apex is in trouble. Uh, pretty badly, too. Okay, uh, the following is not legal advice. The following is only my opinion, my reasoned opinion as a non-practicing attorney uh, in the state of Texas. Please do not try and find me. Please don't. Any of that stuff, I'm asking you. I'm not interested. I have no money. So you can't steal anything from me. There's nothing to steal. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so what is the problem with all these prop firm models? Number one, you're, you're soliciting the public uh, into a regulated profession. And it's a regulated profession for a reason, uh, a very important reason. So that's number one, your first liability. Number two, worse than that, uh, you are essentially hijacking or stealing CME data fees. There's a reason why they, they make you pay the 135, like the professional data fees. Uh, that is a part of the regulated profession, which is why if you get on a top step live funded account, they're covering some of their liability by making you pay the data fees, which Apex is not doing that, and that's a liability. Uh, number three, it's kind of false advertising because they're making it sound like you're trading with their money and you're really trading a simulated account with an opportunity to be paid. But it's not really a live brokerage account. That's a problem. Uh, the biggest absolute, like, if I were writing up a lawsuit right now, oh, it'd be juicy. It'd be a juicy, juicy lawsuit, big settlement, big settlement coming. And that's encouraging multiple accounts. Yeah, by far. It's not even like... Like a, between all of your com, uh, complaints, your claims, encouraging gambling, mm. multiple accounts, 20 accounts, bad, very bad, very, very bad. I really can't believe they haven't consulted with an attorney on that. It's very bad. I would be shocked if no one sues Apex. It's just I would just be shocked. Knowing this country, knowing litigation, knowing plaintiff's attorneys, uh, somebody's taking that case on and they're getting a cease and desist they're getting a demand letter uh, soon probably like soon soon some guy in Kentucky like out of nowhere they're going to hit him with a federal complaint and it's going to be big could even be a class action yeah big very big um, my opinion they, I can't believe they're getting away with that. I'll be honest with you. Um, you don't have to have a securities license. You, they're telling you that you can make money. And yeah, I guess they do pay you. So I'm not going to say that they don't pay you. I'm not committing slander. They will pay you. If you follow their rules, from everything that I've seen, they do pay out. Okay? But how many people are actually making it to get paid out versus blowing those accounts and blowing them again and again and again and again? Mm. Class action written all over it. I'm serious. Class action is just written all over Apex's face. Uh, it's, it's written all over their face. Class action. Soliciting the public into a regulated profession. Uh, false advert. I would say... If I were writing a complaint against Apex Trader Funding right now, it would be something along the lines of, first off, I would make it a class action because people in multiple states are going to be affected. So it's going to be well over $75,000. You've got diversity jurisdiction there. Um, I would say uh, securities fraud, uh, maybe wire fraud. Uh, that would be a stretch, but it's there. Um, I would say some sort of false advertising, and we talked about that. Um, contract disputes. You have your contract law, that'd be a state law claim that's there. Um, I would say, yeah, misleading or deceptive. Ooh, DTPA claim, yeah, yeah. 
state of Texas is a very strong act. I think Apex is going to be hit with a DTPA, Deceptive Trade Practices Act. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's coming. Uh Uh-huh. Big time. I'd send them a DTPA demand letter. Yeah, that's what I would do. And I would say that you are misleading Texas consumers pretty badly. That's what I would say. I don't know Illinois law, so Top Step is, is an LLC based out of Illinois. I'm not an Illinois attorney. I'm a Texas attorney. Uh, I would hit him with the DTPA. Yeah, DTPA. Then I'd also hit him with, uh, that's statutory, by the way. That's not common law. The De- Deceptive Trade Practices Act. I'd hit him with that. I'd hit him with uh, false advertising. Could even throw in negligence. Why not? Um, other cons- there could be federal consumer protection acts they're going to be hit with probably my opinion uh, yeah they could be hit in federal court badly and Mr. Martin as the CEO he's probably going to get hit with it too yeah if, he, if they haven't already gotten a demand letter from some law firm out there it's coming it's coming for sure, and it's going to be probably class action. It's probably going to be a mixture of federal and state law claims, probably wire fraud, probably securities fraud, probably false advertising. So there are federal consumer protection statutes. They probably hit them with some sort of federal uh, federal consumer protection. Since it's a company in Texas, you probably also hit them with Texas state law claims, contract, contract theories, maybe a negligence theory. That would be kind of difficult. Uh, but then the big one, Treble damages, you're talking treble damages, uh, would be uh, Deceptive Trade Practices Act in Texas. Yeah, that'd be bad. Mm. Yeah. Probably not going to see them around very much longer. They're going to get that demand letter from some law firm probably out of Austin, maybe Dallas, maybe Houston. And it's going to say, you took my client for $100,000. You know, it's going to be bad. Yeah. I guarantee you they got some people on Apex that have blown tens of thousands of dollars on it. I guarantee you. Like, without a doubt. Somebody's out there. There's an injured plaintiff out there, and plaintiff's attorneys are hungry. Plaintiff's attorneys that work on contingency. Again, if you're outside of the United States, you got no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm just telling you from a United States attorney... Or Texas, okay, not United States. I'm not federally barred. Uh, I'm state barred. And it's bad. Yeah, those facts are very bad. I'm going to be honest. If I were Apex, I'd be, I'd be hiring a law firm right now. Like, I would hire them right now. Like, get legal representation now, not later. If I were on Apex's defense... I would say, you know, the customers knew what they were getting into. Uh, We advertised all of our terms fully and frankly. Uh, They had to sign a contract. That's going to be a weak claim, though. We're in a plaintiff-friendly jurisdiction. The state of Texas is, is generally speaking, a plaintiff-friendly jurisdiction. Generally speaking, like broad strokes. And, yeah, it's bad. They're going to have to have probably a multi-million dollar settlement. Mm. Shit, I might need to get it. No, I'm not soliciting you. Don't come hire me. Oh, boy. Yeah. No securities licenses. Um, not having to pay professional data fees. That's straight theft. Like, that's just common law theft. That's bad. Um, Deceptive Trade Practices Act in this great state. Mm-hmm. Encouraging gambling behavior, bad, very bad. The whole set of facts is terrible. All my opinion, by the way. Hope everyone is having a good day today. By the way, you know what, uh, talk about claims. Let's say that an Apex employee or Daryl Martin himself with their damn live trailing drawdown 
Um, you know, let's say they watch this video and they think, okay, I'm going to sue this guy for defamation. Well, number one, you know I'm an attorney, so you know I don't have to pay an attorney to defend myself. Number one. Number two, I'm telling you over and over and over again that this is my opinion. I, I have no hard facts at all. I'm speculating. I have said repeatedly that, that Apex will pay you according to its contract terms. And I believe that. Uh, so... If any of you wise guys think that finding me and you know suing me for defamation or slander, first off, that's a difficult claim. Uh, we, I would slap you down with a uh, anti-slap motion. Your suit wouldn't make it very far. I have First Amendment protections. I also have uh, Constitution of Texas protections. Uh, if you don't know this, because you you know you're not an attorney. Um, you are in the state of Texas you have a further uh, right of freedom of speech than you do in some other states it's called anti-slap or strategic lawsuits against public participation anti-slap so uh, you know I'd anti-slap you your lawsuit wouldn't get very far and your attorneys would tell you that You could say, well, he's an attorney, and therefore, you know, he shouldn't be going out there and soliciting the public. I'm outright telling you, don't hire me. Don't. I'm not interested. Don't hire me. So, how am I soliciting you? I'm not. What I'm telling you about Apex Trader Funding, from my legal opinion, is that company is going to be sued to hell. Soon. It's probably going to be a class action. It's probably going to be multi-state. And they're probably going to disappear off the face of the earth. Notice that I said likely and probably, not will happen. I know... Guys, I know plaintiff's attorneys. They're hungry. Okay. Uh, we're going to pull this. And we are at 154, 247, simulated trading. Simulated trading. If you're in another country, you're in like Germany, Europe, you know, non common law jurisdiction, uh, civil law jurisdiction, they generally are more defendant friendly, and you wouldn't hear that coming out of me. As a Texas attorney, I'm telling you, we're a plaintiff's friendly country, we're a plaintiff friendly state. And, uh, yeah. Very bad. Very, very bad. Really shocking to me that they have not consulted with attorneys. I mean, if they want to have their business go on over time, they cannot They cannot be doing the 20-account thing. That's opening them up way. You know, sometimes, let me tell you this. I see liability everywhere. It's my job. It's my duty. It was my job. No longer want it to be my job, but... You'll never, when you're an attorney, you'll never, like liability, you see it everywhere. Because you know how plaintiff's attorneys operate. And they're hungry. And they will go after you and your client. And I cannot believe that Apex, Apex is wealthy enough. Daryl and his company, they're wealthy enough to hire an, a legal team. And nobody's told them that this is bad. That, that buddy, this whole business you got going here, very bad. Like, you're probably going to be sued on a you're probably going to be sued in federal court in Austin uh, it's probably going to be a class action and it's probably going to be for millions yeah millions uh, fuck I mean if you're looking at like worst case scenario Department of Justice wire fraud securities fraud yeah that bad no I'm not saying that's going to happen tomorrow but it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. And the biggest the biggest issue is the please go sign up for 20 accounts. Because if you just said, like, here's one account, okay. You know, you're still not making them get securities licenses. You're still not making them pay professional data fees. But you're saying one account. You're saying 20. Bad. 
they would limit the damage a lot if they just said have one account. They would limit the potential damage, the potential liability by a factor of like 100. Uh, but as it is, it's going the way of, guys, this is going the way of online poker, in my opinion. This, this model, business model, is not going to be around. You got to use it while you can't because it's going away. And then you'll have to trade your own do y'all know why when you sign up for a Thinkorswim account, an Oanda account, a Forex.com, do you know why you have to sign 30,000 disclosures? Do you know why? Because you're almost certainly going to lose every dime you put in. That's why. And they're trying to limit their liability the right way. They know it. You should know it too. If you're trying to be responsible with your money, you can make money you can be a professional day trader, but you got to know the environment in which you're operating. You have to know how difficult this is. You have to, like, you got to be aware. You can't fool yourself. You're up against trading algorithms and the best traders in the world. You think they want to see you make money? They don't care. They're not, like, opposed to you, but they're interested in making them and their own clients money, not you. That's why you have to sign 30,000 disclosures to trade your own account. That's why. They know. Hmm. It's bad. It's really bad. Uh, so we came down a little bit over two standard deviations. We're coming back up. I'm going to say uh, right here. I'm going to put one there. Let's see if we get that. And then... Uh, Okay. It's going to be all the orders I'm going to have in the marketplace right now. So the day is going to come where if you want to trade one of these companies, you'll have to get your securities license, and I'm willing to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll go get my securities license. It's not that hard. You can do it. Uh, and these companies won't be able to offer outside of the United States. Nope. That will go away as well. That will go away as well. That will go the way of the highway. I'm really surprised that the SEC has not already got on these companies, to be honest with you. It really wouldn't be the SEC's domain. It would be uh, uh, CFTC, the uh, Commodities Futures Trading Commission. I'm surprised they haven't gotten, they, these companies have not already gotten a letter from CFTC. Very surprised. But it won't be the CFTC that that really drives these companies away. It'll it'll be a lawsuit. It'll be a big one. A big one. Yeah, big one. It'll be a large lawsuit. Probably probably diversity jurisdiction. Or even federal question. Okay? You're taking your bar exam soon. Federal question. Could even be thirteen thirty one jurisdiction. Yeah. What is that? Federal Consumer Protection Acts, there are those. That would be a federal question. Securities fraud, that would be a federal question. Uh, wire fraud, that would be a federal question. Yeah. I think that of all the companies that I've seen, Top Step has been the most concerned about its own liability. Okay. Why do I say that? They make you pay the CME professional data fees. So they're not running afoul of commodities, uh, Chicago Mer Mercantile Exchange, Chicago Board of Trade. So I would say that. I would say that when I, when I first got funded the first time, um, you know, their contract was more professionally drafted, in my opinion, way more professionally drafted from an attorney's perspective, like wasn't even close. Um, they published their pass rates, 22%. Yeah, they published that. They have disclosures from end to end. So I would say Top Step is in a better position legally. Apex, no. Bad contract, badly drafted. Kind of like they hired a two cent. Like, damn, it almost felt like, you know, I was reading. I was reading Apex's uh, funded account contract. It almost, you know, kind of read like they themselves wrote it. Like they didn't hire an attorney to write it. It was bad. It was very bad. Most of you don't read your shit. I'm an attorney, so I do. 
contract law interests me. Yeah, and it was very poorly drafted. My opinion. So. All right. The runtime of this video is at one minute and five seconds. You've been hearing me uh, talk a lot about speculation, uh, a lot about my opinion, a lot about things that are speculation and my opinion. Uh, if you want to come sue me, I will hit you with, uh, I'm going to hit you with an anti-slap motion and you will lose and your case will be dismissed. Okay? So you can try. You will fail. So we've been through that. Might be music time. Yeah, I mean, y'all ever, like, a lot of you are in high school, you're younger men or women, uh, you don't know why, like, things are done the way that they are. Do you know how many billions and millions and millions of dollars have been lost trying to trade futures, options? It's a lot. So do you know why you sign up for a Trade Station account, you sign up for a Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab? Do you know why they make you sign, like, 30,000 disclosures? Because they know. They know. You know, Robinhood has been sued recently pretty badly because they tried to pull some stuff and they got hit with a big settlement. They had to settle because they tried to pull some fast movers and, uh, yeah, they had to pay out a big settlement. I think it was like a $300,000 settlement. So, old Apex LLC down there in Austin, I think you're looking at half million dollar, million dollar settlement. I think, my opinion. And it, uh, like, worse comes to worse, like, jail time. Criminal. Why? Securities fraud, wire fraud, we've been through that. Now, that would have to be DOJ. Do I really think the DOJ cares enough? No. So, in that case, no. No. You gotta remember, with a lot of a lot of you that are not attorneys, you don't you don't realize this, but but like lawsuits are not criminal cases. A, a private attorney, I cannot put you in prison. I'm not a district attorney. I'm not a state's attorney general. I have no ability to do that, but I can sue you civilly. What I'm trying to say is that these companies that are out of the United States, not making you get securities licenses. Mm. it's a gray area like SEC, CFTC it would probably be the jurisdiction of the CFTC Commodities Futures Trading Commission not SEC to be specific but uh, you know it's kind of a gray area it's not really something that uh, the CFTC has had to deal with before it's a new industry uh, so that would be de novo you know it would be a new so you'd have to shoehorn it in to other existing statutes, existing common law. Unfortunately, uh, Apex Trader Funding is, in, is out of Austin, Texas, and uh, we are a very consumer protective state. Like, we have the DTPA, and it's bad. If you get found of intentional fraud, intentionally misleading consumers, three times the damages it's what we call treble damages. It's In Texas, we don't call them punitive damages. We call them exemplary damages. And they're looking at exemplaries. They're going to get hit with a DTPA claim. And uh, that DTPA claim is going to be nasty, in my opinion. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be, th it's going to be three. And it's probably going to be federal court. It's going to be a mixture of federal claims, state claims. And Texas is 
very protective of its consumers. The uh, Deceptive Trade Practices Act, Texas DTPA, different states have a similar similar statutes. Um, mm, very bad. I cannot believe with all the money they're making that they have not hired on a law, a law firm. It's just like unbelievable to me. And if they have, I don't know what their attorneys are telling them. Like, guys, come on. This is not good. Maybe they hired a, you know, tin can law firm out of Austin. Uh, any serious attorney would tell you that encouraging people to sign up for 20 counts is bad. I mean, that's kind of like 101, liability protection 101. So hopefully they have insurance. I'm assuming they do. Need a big insurance policy on that one. And by the way, insurance policies, by the way, this is one thing they won't tell you. Insurance policies don't handle intentional. They handle negligence. So if Apex LLC gets hit with, uh, they gets hit with intentional, if they're found liable of intentionally deceiving Texas consumers, the insurance ain't paying out for that. Insurance is not covering that. You're looking at a judgment. You're looking at that judgment being abstracted, and you're looking at your property having liens filed against it. Very nasty stuff. Very, very nasty. Uh, okay, I'm going to end that conversation there. I've really set up my piece on it. Uh, maybe I will talk about it in the future. Um, I'm going to just get out required disclosures one more time. I'm going to go through my three disclosures. SEC disclosure. SEC, okay, two disclosures. SEC and CFTC disclosures. Uh, SEC and CFTC disclosures. What you're seeing on here is simulated trading. I am trading using a firm called Top Step. They are based out of Chicago. I am trying to become a funded trader with them. Okay. Th this is a simulated account. This is not real. Uh, it does not reflect periods of illiquidity in the market. Uh, trading involves substantial risk of loss, including more than you invest. Okay, third disclosure I got to get through is State Bar of Texas disclosure, which is I'm not uh, advertising you to be my client. I don't want you to be my client. Please don't contact me. Um, all, of the, all of the conversation that you just heard for the past hour was my own opinion. It was my own speculation. Uh, I am protected by the First Amendment and by Texas statutes, uh, anti-slap anti -slap and um, Texas Constitution First Amendment protections. Uh, the equivalent of that in the Texas Constitution, which I think is also our First Amendment. So uh, if you want to come sue me, it is my opinion, legal opinion, that you will lose. Okay, I'll hit you with an anti-slap. Uh, I don't need to pay for an attorney. Uh, I am my own attorney. So those are all my disclosures. Um, we've been through State Bar of Texas. I'm not advertising. And we've been through SEC and CFTC. So that's good to go. Uh, disclosures are also in my description box. That's a juicy lawsuit. Juicy, juicy, juicy. Okay, back to futures day trading talk on our simulated account. Um, 
I am looking at this new week opening gap here. We're looking at a deep retracement right now. What is a deep retracement? A deep retracement is where, you know, we're probably looking at this being our dealing range, okay? We're probably looking at coming up above this. This is going to confuse you. I know how you people work. It's going to be confusing. Okay. This is probably our current dealing range. What is a dealing range? It is the trading range in which you're operating. We're looking at probably a deep premium here. What is a deep premium? Well above the 50% mark. Um, why are my sell limits where they are? Why are the si why are they the sizes that they are? Number one, I am trying to trade professionally. I'm trying to trade using other people's capital um, because I have to because I have no money. Um, so, with that being said, why is it one contract and not fifty? Because uh, I actually want to take this shit seriously, uh, and I don't want to over leverage anymore. I know I won't get there to my dream goals if I'm over leveraging. I'm also trying to show you, the viewer, reasonable futures trading and not gambling. That's what I'm trying to do. That's my objective. I don't want to show you degenerate gambling anymore. I want to show you reasonable profits over time. Okay? Treat this like a business. With that being said, we've got a uh, buy side inefficiency where my first sell limit is, and we've also got another one up where the second sell limit is. Okay, why is the why are these blue lines down here? That's our new week opening gap. You know I work off of two concepts, inefficiencies and liquidity. Again, that's inefficiencies and liquidity. What are inefficiencies? Holes in the chart. Um, what are what is liquidity? Above and above highs and lows where your lead market makers are. What is a lead market maker? Go read the CME website. They'll explain it to you. Did I get through all my disclosures? <laughs> yeah, please don't contact me. You can pretty easily find out who I am. Please don't. I don't want to talk to you. I really don't. Don't want to take you on as a client. I'm not interested. Okay. Might take one short here. I'll leave that one on. I'm going to step away for a minute, kind of calm down. I'm a little bit hyped up right now. My uh, energy level's too high. I've had a little bit of caffeine, so I'm going to go meditate a little bit. I'm going to bring it down.
Oh, okay. Um, let's see. This is probably a short now. We're going to put on one contract. Uh, and we're basically just going to aim for new week opening gap high. You'll notice, right, I, what am I trying to do with this channel? I'm trying to show you responsible. I, I can't. I can't put myself out there as an influence in any manner, shape, or form showing you, you know, irresponsible risk management. So I'm going to put on one contract and see how that goes. You know, just so you know, I'm allowed 10 contracts. I'm not getting anywhere near 10 contracts. Not even uh, in the universe of 10 contracts. Uh, in the in the comment box below, there's going to be all sorts of disclosures on this video. There's going to be like three of them. I'm going to be loaded with disclosures. <laughs> you are not my client. I do not represent you. I don't want to represent you. This is not a solicitation. You can tell, like, am I passionate about the law? Yeah. Doesn't mean I want to do it in my life more passionate about this than the law, but I still love the law. Practicing law, uh, suing people, can be very fun. Trial, great. I mean, trial is a great experience. They never go to trial, though. You know, it's funny. You're in law school, and you, you, learn, you, know, you mostly read jury verdicts, right? You, mostly, you have to read cases that actually, like, mostly appellate cases. Mostly appellate cases, very few trial cases, but you, you know, and uh, appellate practice is something else. Very smart people in appellate practice. Very proficient in appellate practice. I'm not, I'm not, I was a trial attorney. By the way, just in case this ever comes out to any people that I know personally, I want to say that the last law firm that I worked at were great people. Uh, if, if somehow that, I'm not going to name it, I'm not going to name it here, but just in case, you know, this gets out there, I want to say that they're great people, great company, great law firm, great supervising attorney. Um, it's not what I want to do with my life. Uh, I've made that decision, but just in case, you know, I don't ever want you people to think that like my last supervising attorney wasn't a great man. Uh, he was very talented attorney. And uh, in case he's watching this, hello. I, you know, I'm sure that eventually my videos are going to get to people that I know, and a lot of you are going to think that I'm a damn fool for trying this. And I just want to say I don't really care what you think. at all. So in case this gets to people that I know, um, I don't care what you think at all. Like not one iota. Uh, so don't contact me because I don't care what you think. And you're going to get the same answer from me if you call me, if you text message me. Uh, you're going to get the exact same answer, which is screw off. Okay? Okay. And if you piss me off too much, I might sue you. So let's not not go there. Okay, that was bad. I will not sue you. That's okay. I'm just letting you know that I don't care what you think. If top step employees find this, these are all my opinions, guys. Top step, I love you. I don't represent you. I don't want to. I'm not an Illinois licensed attorney. So if any employees from top step watch this, you know, I obviously think that you are the best company out there. Okay? I think that you're doing the right things. Okay?
So why did we put on one contract and not ten? Right there. That's why. All right. We're coming up on a runtime of... Um, what is a runtime here? It's going to be about an hour and 30 minutes. I'll let it get to exactly one hour and 30 minutes and uh, put this up as resettlement to Asia. Um, yeah, we'll do that. So you got to see uh, risk management. You got to see that I wasn't, you know, aiming for my full target at first. I was aiming for a a reasonable profit target here. So I'll show you the executions there. So we went short three. We covered two here. Covered one there. And we're still trying to short down the new week opening gap. Yeah, I've had YouTube channels before, and then I've had people like reach out to me, and I just want to be clear, don't. Uh, I'm not answering. Because I don't trust you at all. So if you're media about certain things, uh, and you know who you are, don't contact me. Uh, screw off. I've had people do that before, and I'm not interested. The only thing that I really love talking about, I love talking about lawsuits, the law, and I love talking about trading. That's really all I care about. I love legal theory. Um, I'm not practicing law, be not because I dislike it. Uh, I just don't want to spend all the time researching, writing briefs, dealing with other employees, that sort of thing. doesn't mean I don't love the law. I do, especially in this great state. Um, Okay, I gotta put disclosures all over this video. Um, a new video recording will start soon. I'm just gonna let this get over to an hour and 30 minutes. Been a pleasure to be with you.